The International Digital Dental Academy Podcast, Media Partner FMC. Welcome to the future of dentistry. So everybody, this is another uh, IDDA podcast. Uh, today we have the pleasure of chatting over lunch on the 3D printing course with Chris Orr. Uh, Chris, you all know from Advanced Medical Seminars, uh, very gifted in aesthetics. And um, Chris, we'll talk to you chatting with us today. Thank you for having me. So, um, we, uh, do you know what? We've already chatted a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about here, so we're going to have to recap. Yeah. Just go on. But, um, yeah, tell us Chris why you're here on the first Oh, well, I've dabbled a bit with 3D printing, so all my printing non dental things. Um, my journey there basically, there are so many variables, so many different things that you can do. And it's easier if you see what somebody else is doing and just yeah. implement their workflow. So I'm saving myself, I hope, a lot of time and frustration by seeing what you guys do because you do it every um, and so far, yeah, you make it great. It seems extremely <laughs> easy. Um, but it, it's just interesting to see that this is more and more a part of our workflow. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing, I think, it was the second version of CEREC at a conference in Hong Kong in 1995. And it's a million miles away from what we yeah. do today. Yeah, um, so. and, and those days, you had to really, really be into it. It was a complete pain to use. But people did, people adopted it. Mm-hmm. And I like Chris yeah. thought, yeah. <laughs> um, but but so, I, I used some of the not that version of Sarah, the next version of Sarah kind of place and worked. And maybe it was good fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to be honest and say that if, I think everybody has different views on how involved they want to be in doing every aspect of the case. Yeah. Well, I, do, I do like outsourcing stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be the person who will be sitting up at midnight playing around with files and mesh mix or whatever to yeah. print it out for the next. You want to just work I want somebody else to do that bit for me. Yeah. Um, but the, the, and the, it's a compromise. Is this the way forward? Yeah, if you want it to be, yeah. you know, it can be. But the other method is getting somebody to do it for you. Interesting thing actually, um, a lot I always say to people come on our courses, go and visit your lab. Yeah. Go say hello to the technician. And why are they there? Have a look at how much stuff they're doing digitally. Yeah. And it's more than you think because the labs are, are way, way, way ahead of the Definitely, they've got a lot of But I don't think everybody appreciates that. No, not at all. That's why we tried, you know, early days, you know, a few years ago now, when we were doing things with the, with the group, and the DDA, and the IDDA is involved too. The, um, you know, we, we really tried to get lab technicians on board and, you know, showing cases on, discussing stuff, because they've got a massive experience with, you know, with all of the digital equipment. Way before us, but for me, well, dentists were dabbling with the cerebral side of things, and that was becoming better for chair side dentistry. There was a lot more advanced tools with scanners, the CAD software, many of us, a million and bigger units. And but look at the amount of digital now of lab software, it's like XSAP. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's been awesome. I mean, you've obviously held a lot of uh, positions in different uh, parts of dentistry, mm-hmm. and you've had a long journey of uh, bringing and inspiring the dental profession. Tell us a little bit about how you go about getting involved with this and what sort of enjoyment do you get out of it? In other words, are you still inspired by dentistry and do you still look forward to going to work every day? Okay. Um, yes, I suppose I do look forward to going to work every day. Dentistry is fun. Um, when it stops being fun, that's when I will stop doing it. Um, my journey started actually, funny, I mentioned that conference. I met a Swedish guy called Svart the Chloroscope. We no, know it's our jobs. First time across the world. Yeah. Yeah. And what he was doing at that time was really pushing the end of the yeah. And he used to be involved with portion restorations. At the time, the adhesion wasn't easy, and the portion wasn't really ready for doing that particular thing. But he made it work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And having been friends with him for many years, um, and in some of my early jobs, putting some of the things him in the practice, I realised actually that dentistry could be very, very different from what the university had taught me. So it, things kind of snowballed from there. And unfortunately, the, you know, there are some things that have not changed. You need to know your materials, you need to know your processes, so that you can return and learn what you can get away with, where you can push the envelope a little bit, yeah. and then challenge things. And 
then that becomes the next bit of fun. Well, you know, it's like what we talked about before, before we started recording. One of the things, you know, some of you uh, watching will know or listening will know about uh, Chris. Chris oversees everything with the prestigious Aesthetic Dentistry Awards. And I think I'm, I'm right in saying they're probably the most well respected awards out of all dental awards simply because everybody knows how strict they are with the judging, how uh, strict it is with the entry, with you know the the amount of documentation you have to put, and if you win those, then it's you know it, it, it's a real achievement. And it's even just you know what we were talking about before is it's really nice to see the standards of other dentists and aspire to stuff. And I think um, you know over the lockdown period, number one I really missed. We said before I really missed the shorts. <laughs> but the, um, the the other thing is I think it's probably been a lot more case um, display aspiration that I've seen with people showing techniques because of all the webinars and things like that. Um, maybe less so when people are closed down, but I think it's given people a little more time to reflect from what I hear and chat to people anyway. Yeah. And um, I think hopefully, you know, future ones we'll see probably a big improvement in people there. But it's interesting, when we started those awards just started 12 years ago, Yeah. The, what we were all, what we've always been surprised at how high the standard of entries is. Just everything, it's, there's the odd thing that comes in, you go, okay, that's not going to make the shortest, but actually doing the shortest thing, which is my job, to yes, go through and look at every single thing that's come in, yeah. it's increasingly a difficult job because you're looking at, right, this is excellent, and this is excellent, and this was excellent, this was so which one do, because you can't have a shortest of 25 nails, it's just not sensible. So the standard going to be very good. The myth that somehow dentistry is not good in this country, that's completely not true. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're talking about insp inspirational things. It inspired me looking at the standards that other people are yeah, working at. Yeah. You look at that, it's amazing. It's beautiful it's stuff. It's beautiful stuff that you've got to send in, which is extremely good. Well, Jerry, I'll tell you he's not here, and I know you can use a lot of the composite stuff, which I'm, to go back around and set up with the 3D printing costs. Um, something which, you know, Prime example of the beautiful inclusion of technology from someone who's so gifted. Look at Tom Seeley with the Smartpad stuff with mm -hmm. the yeah. composite and his, and his, and his, I mean, he's a gifted dentist in his own right, uses gifted technicians, um, and using 3D printing, printing robots. And, um, you know, I mean, that's something which I'm guessing is the path we can go down with the composite stuff. But the the Smartpad stuff, 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 I think, is it, really excellent. Um, I went to that course a few months ago, and I really have to give a lot of credit to Tom and me for not just coming up with the idea, but making some of it works in the hands of other people. Yeah. Because you've seen so many protocols for things. I don't know how many times I've sat at a conference and watched somebody describe a way of doing shade matching from photographs. Yeah. Which only works some of the time in the hands of the person who yes. originally made. Yeah. Then you have fans, you know, you look at things like Elan, Sasha Hines, pull off almost, it's almost miraculous that yeah. you have something that other people who are not the inventor work yeah. and you know greatly respect to Tom and Biddy for coming up with uh, something that is easy that you can do it worked well for normal dentists with a decent amount of motivation um, rather than being just something that only superstars can do. Which in turn really means that we can do better dentistry for our patients which is ultimately why we're here. Yeah. So we have great respect for that. Uh, following on from that I was going to say do you think Chris that have you seen with the awards entries more inspiration of digital and a higher standard because of that? Um, or a mix? I don't believe so. Um, there's a, there probably are more things being done, at least partially digitally, yeah. over the last five years. Or involvement in all that ways. There would probably be, I don't think there are any cases that are done 100% analog. I, don't think, I think there are very few cases that are done 100% digital. Because if you look at all the workflows, people tend to jump in and out of, particularly the lab, yeah. and all the days of the workflow as that it suits them. Uh, I think they may do that in case by case basis. Yeah. Um, does the digital stuff mean we get an overall higher standard of entries? Um, or I suppose as a wider thing, does digital mean that we overall do better dentistry? Mm -hmm. Again, we were talking about this before. Yeah. It is sort of yes and no to that. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, from the point of view, but as you were saying about you know, chair side mm -hmm. uh, quality control. You look at the graphs and go, oh my god, did I do that? Yeah. So, yeah. And we've all been through that with our scanners, but we get better at prepping. 
you can do more volume with all the other space that you made for the lab and the test and if you can be bothered, you have to make the extra effort to do it, but overall you get better. Um, I think also where digital thoughts help us is in the area of reproducibility. So whatever you mocked up, whatever you planned, yeah. <coughs> it's much easier for the technician to actually then make that yeah, exactly. digital install rather than you wax it up by hand. Yeah. And then you're trying to replicate that in the final ceramic and it doesn't always go yeah. all that. It's not, it's not an easy cast. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not. You know, not that waxing you know, that point is exactly the reason why I got into digital data yeah. 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 is because I did a few wax up for patients and I, the lab just couldn't replicate that wax up from what we put into the patient's mouth. Yeah, it looks so like totally different. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I thought there must be a way where we can do this. And that's where actually that was in 2010, 11, where I started delving into the into the digital stuff. And, and that's such a true point. Uh, but you know, that's in a way why years later, and something we'll go over this afternoon, is the two player side of things. So yeah. We need to put in that. Like trying to hide to go uh, down, so sorry. Uh, with the arm with this two pipes are just you know, synonymous with just the beauty and then mm -hmm. an integrator goes into the workflow choosing the right tooth shape. It's the same shape then, no matter which part of the process yeah. you've got, whether it's 2D mock-up, 3D mock-up, um, you know, the CAM design, the lab technicians now, they've got the lab is installed and yeah. it's pretty sure that it's done. Definitely, yeah. But it, it's really all about um, predictability. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, working with I've learned a lot, I think, a huge amount from Christian Coachman. Christian always said, you know, you need to deliver what you promised to him. Yeah. Very, very important. Um, the other side, the other thing you mentioned, Jan Haito's, like, I'm finally, I'm very happy Jan's finally found a way of actually earning some money from <laughs> that product. Because when it started, it was like a book, and what the ball was the So many people would take it and put it on And there was nothing else that he could, he, the, the amount of time and effort put into gathering up those beautiful variations of natural dentition, yeah. photographing and making the book, having the models available for the I think it's original going to more people in learn morphology. Yeah. But that unfortunately isn't easy to get an income stream from. And, and it, it, stuff and he's a lovely guy at all. It really is he's, he's so nice. Uh, I think he'd probably give it away if somebody else had the center to need to be a bit more commercial about it. But honestly the thing is it's so good that the, Somebody's actually finding use for it. Because yeah. it's excellent. Yeah. And as you say, you can copy and paste and copy and paste. Yeah. I think there's a, there is a little bit of danger in that, that if there is one tooth shape that you like, you're going to use it all the time. All that the that 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 so you yeah. have to <laughs> maybe, maybe pay a little bit more attention to how you're doing things, but exactly which time you're picking. Yeah. Because um, again, one of the things I learned from, I realized actually, Christian used to be all that talking about the sort of morpho psychology. Yeah. Um, we try to pick the tooth shapes based on the patient's personality. Yeah. And what I realised actually was that I was giving the patient tooth shapes that I liked. Yeah. So that my postdoc pictures were the ones that I would like to think yeah. 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 And since I started doing it, when he talks about it, it sounds like a little bit out there, let's mm -hmm. say. Um, but actually, I, I, I'm, I'm now doing stuff where the patient gets what they like. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't quite like it's the same exact shapes that they do. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's their smile. Yeah, I think it's a person, doesn't it? And they need to deliver it, and they need to clear that. They, they have, um, they have come up, they have to work. Yeah. There we go. So, Chris, where does your journey in the industry take you next? Oh, I think probably my big project for, the, for this year is to blend a little bit more of our learning offering together. Um, so, because people call us up and say, how about your courses online? Yeah. We don't have a good answer for that because sometimes people they want to they want to hear none of it's online, everything's face to face, or they want to hear all of it's online because they're on the other side of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can try to blend those things together. Um, it's difficult when there's a lot of composite stuff in you know, you know, the aesthetic stuff is well, hands on. Well it's dexterity skills as well. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. What it actually would mean that we can do a lot more of the sort of presentation type stuff, we can have that available and that people do at home when they want. And then we do come together for face to face stuff yeah. for doing composite, for doing preps, for learning how to do impressions and scan and all the other kinds of things, food and Facebook. Oh, okay. it's a dog. It's uh, Facebook things like that. It just means that you can use that time yeah. together mm. much more productively. Because ultimately, if somebody's taking a day out of their practice to come for a course, you want to try and make sure they get the best value and pack as much stuff. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right, yeah. So that's that's what gave me this. And let's hope at least the rest of the year. The end of June does come to fruition, and we can do loads more hands on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be nice. Well, with our little masks, and I'm, I'm tired of everything tasting hand sanitizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to eat the hand sanitizer. <laughs> or drink it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Hope somebody said, you know, I never imagined that in all my life my hands would consume more alcohol than my mouth. Oh, yeah. hands are so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what doesn't help, and something which I haven't talked about upstairs yet, is when we're doing the three D printing. I need to tell them I always swear it was. Because yeah. my, my hands look how dry they are. And that I and this is better than it was, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But um okay. I did it only the other size of that. And it's it's sensitized to it. And even worse when you're using alcohol all the whole time it goes crazy. So um yeah, me too, in my job. Anyway, it's been a little bit chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have a little crack on the course of things. Yeah. So uh thanks for the Yeah, thanks for talking to Thank you, thanks a lot. Cheers everybody. See you later. Bye bye. The International Digital Dental Academy Podcast, Media Partner FMC. Welcome to the future of dentistry.